this is the Craft House Magic Setter Tutorials and today I'm going to show you how I make a big sock tube like this and then create four separate socks out of this, so two pairs. Um, basically you're using all of your self-striping and then you're using another yarn to create heels and toes. So to create this sock tube I used a long tail cast on to cast on 60 stitches. I then did 12 rows of 2x2 two two rib and then I just kept knitting till I had a massive long tube and then when I was coming to nearly the end I wanted to make sure that my sock tube matched the other cuff on the other side so what I did is I noticed that there was one row of pink knit underneath the ribbing so I knew that once I'd done one row of the pink colour I could then do 12 rows of rib and then cast off and I used a really stretchy bind off technique so if you haven't got a nice simple two colour stripe you can calculate how much yarn you need to leave before you can start doing the rib section if you know that you're going to finish at the end of the cream if you leave three meters for the cast off edge and then one meter each for each of the rows you've done in the rib you can then calculate how much you need to leave before you can start doing the rib section so once you've got your sock tube you want to mark three points where you're going to be cutting so I folded this sock tube over and actually placed the stripes over each other so we can match it up and then I've just placed a stitch marker there at the halfway point where we're going to be making our first cut. Then just to make it easier instead of having to sort of measure I'll fold that over a second time so that your edge is coming up just to the edge where the cuffs are because if you think about it these two pieces have a cuff on and those two pieces you're going to have to knit cuffs on as well so to make them all the same if you mark um, the length starting from there instead of the end of the ribbing that makes more sense so then you need to mark two points here where you're going to make your second cut so I'm going to place some stitch markers on there of course it doesn't need to be exactly halfway you need to make sure that these pair match and these pair match so you can see that we're going to be cutting in three places so here to split it into two pieces and then here and here to split it into four so you'll have one two three, four pieces left. So I've got the central portion of my sock tube and I'm going to cut this in half so it will make two equal pieces this first cut. I'm getting my scissors and I'm basically going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight rows so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and I'm just taking one little piece of yarn and I'm just going to snip that. I'm marking with my thumb exactly where that position is and then I'm taking a tapestry needle and I'm going to carefully undo this yarn so that you end up with some live stitches just hanging so you just carefully work your way across the tube picking out those stitches if the stitches do drop down a row or so you can just pick those back up again. If you're a bit nervous about picking stitches up, um, you can always pick up the stitches before you cut the yarn so that you've got a bit of security. So I'm just moving around the sock. You could always um, have some scrap yarn um, and leave yourself a lifeline either side of here as well if you prefer to do that. But I don't mind picking up a few stitches if they do drop down one or two rows.
be careful not to pull the stitches too much as you're working your way across. Like I said, if you don't want to risk just pulling the stitches out like I am, you can always put a needle either side through the stitches of where you're going to be having to pick them up anyway. Pick them up before you start undoing the yarn. And there we are, we've got two separate pieces. There are a couple of bits where I may have dropped a couple of stitches down one row, but we can soon fix that. I'm going to get some needles. I'm going to carefully place one of the pieces just to one side and show you me picking up stitches on the other half. So I tend to just start from one side and work to the other. So you might have, see this one has dropped down a little bit, but I will just pick up that stitch and then I can do a sweep around the whole tube just to make sure that there's no drop stitches left. You'll probably end up with less drop stitches than me because I'm trying to do it behind the camera. Now I've done one side, I'm going to work down the other side. If you're using DPNs, you can obviously split your stitches onto the DPNs as normal. So you can see where the yarn is attached actually to this stitch. But we're going to carry on picking up stitches. We can fix it in our sweep around the stitches just to make sure that they're all in the right orientation. There we are, I've picked up all the stitches. I'm just going to do a sweep around the sock making sure that all my stitches are the right orientation and also if I've dropped a stitch like I have here you can just pick up the bar at the back of the work and then loop that stitch over and that one's fixed. Same again with this one. Make sure that they're in the correct orientation so the right hand side of the stitch should be to the front and the left hand side of the stitch should be to the back. That is the correct orientation. If you twist a stitch it will make your work look messy or make it tighter. Now here the yarn is in the middle of the needle so I'm going to be um, making sure that that yarn is at the end of the work. You could always orientate your stitches differently. I also need to count to make sure that I've got 30 stitches on each side as well so I'm going to do that now. I've got 29 on this needle and 31 on the other so I can just transfer one stitch from the back of the work to the front or the current front of the work and continue making sure that the stitches are in the right orientation and they're not split at all and that they've not dropped down. Now I've reached the point where the yarn is situated I'm actually going to knit across to the edge of the work ensuring that if I have got a stitch that's dropped down like this I'll lift that bar at the back of the stitch lift that stitch over that bar reorientate it onto the needle um, and carry on knitting across the work There we are, that's all those stitches nice and neatly back onto the needle. And you want to do the same for the other part of the sock tube so that you don't get um, stitches dropping down any further from leaving them too long. 
so you now have two sock tubes because you cut your sock tube into two and you have active stitches on one end and the rib on the other so you're going to create toes on this end on both of your tubes so I've worked out where the end of my yarn is and I'm going to start knitting on this needle because we're going round in the round as per usual and I'm going to attach my yarn which is going to be my contrast which will actually merge in with this cream yarn for this case so I'm going to just start knitting across the work and work one round before I start my decreases I've now completed one round in just plain knit attaching my new yarn that's a sort of contrast um, now I'm going to start doing the decreases so you'll find the decrease instructions for um, a toe in my simple top down socks which is a free pattern on Ravelry and my website um, which I'll leave links for in the down bar um, but I'll briefly go through it with you so what you want to do is if you've got uh, half of your stitches on this needle and half of your stitches on that needle you'll want to knit one SSK knit to three stitches before the end of the needle and then do knit two together knit one and do exactly the same on the other side and then do a plain knit round and then you're just repeating these two rows until you have 20 stitches left on your needles so I'm going to carry on doing those um, and I shall show you what it looks like when I've finished there is also a video for the simple top down sock on YouTube as well which I will leave links to in the down bar if you want to see it in more detail. I've now done the toe decreases and it's time to do a kitchener stitch. So if you want detailed instructions um, you can find a video on my YouTube channel which is the part three of the top down socks and I'll leave a link down below. Um, but it's just a normal kitchener stitch so basically to start you go knitwise through the front drop the stitch off purlwise through the next stitch at the front and leave that one there purlwise through the back stitch drop the stitch off and knitwise through the back, back stitch so you just repeat that all the way across to cast off those stitches So there we are, I've made the toe decreases and cast off on both of those tubes. So I've got two tubes that need to have one more cut to make them into two pairs of socks. So I've taken one of these tubes and I'm going to start cutting um, this apart at the place that we marked before in the same way as I did um, when I cut the tube into two. So I've now divided this tube into two again. Um, so this one's got a toe on and this one's got a cuff on. So what we effectively want to do is make a toe on this one and a cuff on this one. So I'm going to pick up those stitches now. So I've got the tube with the finished toe on the one end and I've picked up stitches on this end and now I'm just going to create a 2x2 two two rib um, to make the top of the sock. So I've got, a, I've got the end of the work here and I'm going to start working at the same place uh, with the contrast yarn. It's not quite so obvious for me because I've chosen a cream yarn which will match in uh, with the cream in the stripes. So I've been doing knit two, purl two across the work and I've just got to a purl and I've got one stitch left and um, because it's easier to start a new needle with a knit stitch I'm going to transfer that stitch over to the other needle. And carry on doing the knit two, purl two um, until I've got 12 rounds or whatever number of rows you'd like to do. So I've knitted 12 rows 
of 2x2 two two rib but of course you can choose whatever rib you want to and knit as many rows as you like to have your rib and I'm going to do a stretchy bind off now so this stretchy bind off I've taken from a very pink knits tutorial um, but I'm just going to briefly go through it so I've just knitted um, the first two stitches because that's um, in line with the rib below and then I'm going to put the needle into those two stitches and knit two together then the next stitch is a purl so I'll purl that stitch and because the last stitch I've just done is a purl I'll then purl two together and then next stitch is a purl so I'll purl again and then purl two together so basically you're knitting or purling as the row below but then knitting or purling those two together as well so the next stitch is a knit so I'll knit and knit two together knit knit two together so when I'm knitting two together I'm knitting through the back loop there so I'm slowly casting off those stitches and it's a nice stretchy bind off so once more I'm purling because it's purl in the row below and purl two together purl purl two together so I'll carry on all the way around casting off those stitches so I've now cast off those ribbed stitches and it does flare out slightly but once it's blocked or once you wear them that'll disappear so we have the other shorter tube which we've split um, here I need to pick up these stitches and knit a toe like this one as we did before so I've now added a toe to this part of the sock so I've got a cuff this end and a toe that end and on the piece that I'd done before toe this end and the cuff this end so we need to now cut our second part of the sock so before we created a toe on this long tube and we need to split this one as we did for the one we've just shown you so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to add a toe to this side and a cuff to this side so we've got a cuff and a toe on each of the four parts so I've now split the tube and just to show you that these are going to be matching this is the one that I've made the toe and the cuff on and I'm going to pick up these stitches and make a cuff to match this one and then with this bit this is going to match this piece that I've made so these are the initial cuffs that I did on the tube and they match nicely and I just need to pick up the stitches here and make a toe to match this one so I've now added a cuff and a toe bit to the ones we've just split so each part has got a cuff and a toe cuff and a toe and if we put the ones that are going to pair together um, in one place you can see that they match perfectly so these are the original cuffs on the sock tube with the additional toes and then on the second pair we've got the new cuffs and the new toes so next thing we need to do is cut in some afterthought heels so in part two I'll show you how to do that next step so in addition to just cutting up your big long sock tube where you've knitted a whole ball of yarn into sort of two pairs of socks you can calculate how long you want your socks um, and how big your tube needs to be just to make one pair so for instance if you calculate from the cuff to where the heel is and then the number of inches you want for your foot so the bit of tube you'll need for your foot will be the length of your foot minus three and a half inches so if my foot is nine and a half inches I would then need to make sure I'd got six inches for the foot bit and say I'd like six inches on average for the leg so if you knit a 12 inch piece that would be enough for one sock um, so if you'd knit a 24 inch tube that would be enough for one pair for instance if that makes sense if you have any questions pop them in the down bar and I do my best to answer them um, but watch out for part two which will be coming out next week where I will show you how to cut in um, a heel for these two pairs here um, it's a true afterthought heel 
So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.